Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas of the Lawa Church. And prior to the start of the funeral mass itself, we would ask that if you have a cell phone, you please silence it at this time. Thank you very much.
是这样，我你。Please stand. Good morning and welcome to St. Thomas of Villanova. We come together this morning to offer this Holy Mass and to pray for our brother George. So let us begin as we always do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, our brother George died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this holy mystery, your servant, our brother George, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And please be seated for the first reading. I'd like to invite John. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, 
a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. And as for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to all childish ways. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, 
even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise and honor to you. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, unlike you ancestors who ate and still died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. It is always very difficult to preach or to say anything during a funeral mass when we come together as a family, when we come together and we are grieving of the loss of our loved one. But if I like to summarize this homily only in a couple sentences, I would probably go to the Gospel reading that you may probably all remember when one of the scholars approached Jesus and asked him, Master, what to do in order to inherit eternal life? Master, how to live to be saved? And I think Jesus would probably say, look at George. George showed us how to live to reach that eternal life. So yes, whenever we come to celebrate funeral mass, our hearts are filled with grief, with sadness. We do cry because we realize that we lost someone that we loved so much, someone that we spent so many, so much time together, so many different moments. And we kind of realize that Today, we saying goodbye to George, and those moments are over. And we are filled with different feelings, especially sad feelings, because again, we saying goodbye to our brother George. And for those people who have no faith in the promises of Jesus Christ, the death of a loved one is probably the biggest tragedy that they have to face in life. Because for someone who has no faith, who has no faith, that person also 
has no hope in eternal life. But today, this morning, I believe and I know that we came together as people who believe. Yes, we do have doubts at times, we all have doubts, but this morning we come as people who believe that this life doesn't end up this way, that our life continues. And if you listen to the gospel reading for this morning, Jesus is telling us and telling his followers, his disciples, that if you eat my body and when you drink my blood, you will never die. You will have eternal life. So Jesus is promising to each one of us that when we come and we, when we receive the Holy Eucharist, when we receive the body of Christ, that will give us life that will never end. And he's not talking about our physical life here on earth that we know that sooner or later will end up, but he's talking about the life eternal, life with God, life that is no more prone to any sickness, any doubts, any sins, any illness. There's only a joyous celebration of eternal life. And I said at the beginning that George gave us all a best example, the best example of how to live to inherit eternal life because I knew George quite well I remember him coming to Mass when he was still able to come and participate in the Holy Eucharist. So he was feeding himself on the body of Christ very frequently because he truly believed that this food from heaven will give him life that never ends, that will provide for him the life eternal. And yes, we are sad because we saying goodbye to one of our family members, our father, grandfather, friend, but also our parishioners. But we truly believe that his life is not over. His life continues. He, his life only changed for a better. And if George could say anything to us this morning, he would probably tell us, don't cry, don't be sad, because I am in much better place now. I am with God. The food that I was eating, the bread of life, gave me this life that I was hoping for, that I was waiting for. And yes, George is now happy. We are sad because we will miss him, but we know and we believe that this separation is not forever. One day we will be all reunited with George, with his wife Sherry, and with all of those brothers and sisters that left before us. So I think when we come together to celebrate, as you see on this front page of the, this worship aid, we came to celebrate George's life. Because we Christians, we don't say that somebody died. We believe that somebody went to God, is with God, moved to eternal life. As I said before, the life doesn't end up. It's only, it's only transformed to a better life. So we believe that George is in a better place. Yes, we will miss him, but we should learn from him. There is so much to learn from George. As I said, he received the body of Christ frequently he was filled with faith in God's promises, but he also shared his love not only with God, but also with another people, with other people. And that's why I believe that George is in much better place. So we pray together for George today, but let us also pray for ourselves. Let us pray to learn from George, learn how to live, how to have faith, how to love God and how to love another people. And if we do that one day, just like George, we will be happy with God. 
Jesus said, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood will have eternal life. George has that eternal life already, and now we need to pray for ourselves to be with George one day and to have the doors of heaven wide open for all of us. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon him. Amen. Now I'd like to invite George's grandchildren to come forward to do the prayers of the faithful. My brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Please stand. We thank God for George and the special part he played in our lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the 55 years of marriage that George and Sherry shared, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of George, that their memories help them overcome their grief, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all, for all who supported and cared for George over the past few years, know how much their help is appreciated, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, that we may be strengthened in the knowledge that we will meet George again in eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are here today, that we remember just how fragile life really is, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the love of our St. Thomas and Villanova Parish family be a source of all who grieve for George, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer today for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated for the offerings of the gifts. <laughs> come to know there comes a time of letting go for what it's worth I'm better cause I knew you and as I taste the tears of mine I think of water turned into wine and sometimes my A life beyond what we can see Even though right now it may not make much sense to you It does not matter what we've heard For love will have the final word And wipe every tear Eternal life, 
I know you're dancing on the streets of gold now. No more tears and no more pain. I know I'll see your face again. And on that day, I'll raise a hallelujah. 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 sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant George, we beseech you mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, our brother George, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that George, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. as Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
our dad loved music. And um, I'm going to present this in a song form. First one, Dad the Provider. He was a hardworking man, sometimes two jobs, sometimes more. He always provided laughter in the house with friends, loved his family, loved his wife. They never went to bed angry. He gave endless opportunities to his kids through music, sports, school activities, family vacations to Florida, eight-hour drives to Tennessee, generously sharing his love of cigars by uh, driving us to church with the windows closed and a cigar in his mouth. Thank you, Dad. He extended, with his extended family, get-togethers for Christmas, camping. He took us to concerts almost every week. I mean, from Chicago, Doobie Brothers, Blues Brothers, Kansas, Queen, ELO, Leonard Skinner, Alabama, Willie Nelson, James Taylor, Sticks, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, Herbie Hancock, Buddy Rich, Maynard Ferguson. It was endless live music, and we were so, so lucky. He provided so much for his family, but he never let us get too close to him. Verse 2, Dad the Dad. He was a dad in every sense. He was the life of the party, the jokester, the guy with the rum balls. That's a hint if you come to the luncheon. Uh, he did his own repairs around the home, some Frankenstein-looking repairs that we all discovered as we got older and had to do things. He made time to coach our baseball teams, and we won every single tournament. I don't know how he did it. He built a replica dollhouse of his own house for Karen. He taught his kids how to build and repair things. He occasionally had to use his belt on us to teach us lessons. Good old parenting. But we learned well. And he taught us never to quit, but instead encouraged us to learn how to manage our time, a lesson that we would never, ever forget. In fact, the, uh, the day of his death, I had this at the um, funeral home last night. The quote is, the moment when you want to quit is the moment when you need to keep pushing. Totally our dad. Let me flip to today. You've got this. <laughs> I mean... That's our dad. Um, he made time to cherish our weddings and be with his grandchildren, even traveling to Japan and the Philippines to visit extended family. Um, he was our dad through and through, but he never let us get too close to him. The final chorus, Dad the Father. He and his wife celebrated by exploring the world on their own and with good friends, they visited Mexico, Japan, Jamaica, Hong Kong, China, Singapore, Thailand, Philippines, Costa Rica, and many other countries. We never knew what they did on their vacations, but we always knew when they came home. We always knew when they came home. It was a party nonstop. They worked hard, they traveled, they worked hard, they traveled. All that changed when our mom was diagnosed with ALS. After mom passed away, dad became quiet and a bit angry with his life, his, per his partner of 50 years had been taken from him. And finally, last summer, after 50 years, 53 years in his home, we packed up his house, sold it, and moved him into a new home. Only his second home, in his, uh, the third home in his entire life. Everyone was concerned about this change, but amazingly, he accepted it and moved forward. He began to exercise every day, control his diet, meet new friends, set goals with his daily routines at 89 years old. We were amazed. We thought we were talking to a new dad each time. And in fact, he had become our father. He shared intimate stories with us about his childhood, early times. He called Karen almost every day. 
Carrie would bring his kids to visit. And for me, he would call me a couple times a week, always at one or two in the morning, and ask the same question, what time is it there in China? <laughs> because we were, he called us the China bots, and he never knew what time it was, and so it was always. The stories that we hear about his genuine kindness over the past year has touched our hearts. And we feel like he created a new life for himself. We are truly blessed, not just to call him dad, but our father. No doubt we have our own stories and memories of him, as, but as if you look on printed at on the back of the program, there's a quote there, and it says, be the things you love most about people who are gone. Please carry on. George's kindness, his story, and his humor. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother George may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And before we go our sacred ways, let us now take leave of our brother George. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Choirs of angels lead you into paradise, and may the martyrs come to welcome you. Father of mercies, we commend our brother George in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant George and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
across the bed. 